besides all of the plants and animals that live in our area, the connections that they have with the food webs that we've already mentioned, there are other things that shape our ecosystem and that would be all of the biotic and abiotic factors. Now we need to know what biotic and abiotic factors are. Remember that the prefix bio means living. So a biotic factor is anything alive within your area that influences the ecosystem. So that is going to be the trees that we have in our area, the very fun cool animals that we have in our area, and then this picture just shows uh, kind of highlighted, colored all of the living things. So it could be fish, could be bugs, could be a turtle, could be a monkey, could be grass, plants, trees, so on. Now abiotic, A in front of a word is kind of the opposite, so abiotic is a non-living factor. And there are several non-living factors, we probably don't even think about them anymore, but some abiotic factors that affect us would be wind, the temperature that we live in, the precipitation, how much water do we get for the soil that we have, so the soil type, uh, certain things can or can't grow, the amount of sunlight that we get. All of those influence us. There are certain crops we can't grow here in Indiana because we don't have the right amount of precipitation. We don't get the temperatures that we need. Uh, there are certain items that grow here very, very well because it meets, uh, we, is in Indiana, we get the temperatures and the precipitation and the soil and all of that that they need. So all of those items are incredibly important and shape what our ecosystem looks like and also then what living things will be here. The plant life that we have will determine the types of animals that we'll also get. Your habitat refers to where you live. Excuse me, and your habitat is going to include all of the non living as well as the living. So it's going to be maybe a very mountainous area. You've got non living things there. Mountains are non living. The snow on the mountains is non living. The temperature is non living. The soil is non living. But there's a lot of living factors in there as well. For instance, the type of tree that you have, the type of animal that is in that area. Um, but that's your habitat, where you live and everything that lives around you. You're interacting, whether you do that on a like a face-to-face -face type of a basis or not, you are interacting because you're sharing the same area, the same, the same space, the same water supplies, the same food supplies, and so on. Some other habitats, uh, rainforest, we also have desert habitats. There are several other ones, but I just throw a few up there just as examples. A niche is the job or the role that you play within your environment. Uh, so it could be, you know, what living things do you eat? Where is your place at within the food chain? Who are you getting your energy from? What water source do you go to? So who else are you in competition with? For birds, it might be there's only certain trees that they'll nest in. So they have a specific role that they need. They need that particular type of tree. Without it, they won't lay eggs um, or nest. So that's their niche. What is your individual specific characteristics that are have to be true about you? And once we know what niche each individual living organism has, then we need to talk about community and the interactions, the community interactions that we have. For instance, there is competition. You and I may not feel that uh, within our community as far as other living things. I don't necessarily feel like I compete for water with you know, the possum that lives outside, but wild animals are in competition every single day because they're trying to use the same resources that are in the same place. Sometimes if they're using them at the same time, that can lead to some fights and so on. So we've seen in movies and things, um, a lot of the times there's a one water hole that a lot of the animals will go to. And you might have a predator right across the other side of that watering hole drinking from the same watering uh, water hole as you. So that might create a really good opportunity for some lunch. So there's competition there for water or for food. And when competition between specific animals is there, then that can lead to you know, fights for territory and for area to hunt in maybe. 
a resource when we say that you're fighting for a resource you're using the same resource resources are any necessity of life for instance food is a necessity water the nutrients light is a necessity plants will fight for light if there's a tree that kind of overshadows them it could kill the plant underneath it so that is a necessity they fight for that space some animals take up more territory than others just to have enough hunting ground so any essential like that for plants it might be the sunlight the water the soil nutrients that they need for animals it might be the nesting space again a place to feed a place to get water what types of foods might overlap and so on with other uh, hunters and then when we look at competition there is this uh, competitive exclusion principle that we have in ecology that says that no two species can occupy the same niche in the same habitat okay remember habitats where you live so you can't occupy the exact same role in the same place at the same time because if you do if two animals are that closely matched where they everything about them is the same then there is going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser and we potentially could have a species go extinct at that point if the uh, competition is too great they've done some experiments with this one of them is with barnacle studies so for instance if this barnacle is allowed to live on its own it will grow in the upper and middle part of the ocean bank but if you add another type of barnacle it will compete for the same area and so you can see that the area of survival for this top barnacle is a lot smaller now so its population is decreased and this middle area is uh, conducive or it's the best for this type B barnacle and so there's, com there's competition there uh, specifically for um, area for space we see this also even in the smallest of things like bacteria and paramecium allowed to grow by itself population increases population zero down here population a lot higher up there by themselves each colony of paramecium survives and their numbers are flourishing they're doing great now you take uh, some of each and put them together in the same petri dish and allow them to grow together now you have competition and you notice that in this case this top one its population increased it didn't maybe increase as quickly as it did by itself but because its population increased that means that the other one although it saw a slight increase uh, once you know this first original one once its population got to a certain point then the population of the uh, type you know the second paramecium dropped down maybe it didn't go extinct but it was uh, very very low so we don't want we don't want um, two species to be that closely matched within the same area because we don't want species to go extinct we want that diversity within our habitats